Hi, my name is Carlos Robles, and I'm a principal product manager on the SQL Developer Experiences team. In this demo, I will show you how the latest MS SQL extension for VS Code integrates with Microsoft Fabric, letting you browse existing SQL databases and provision new SQL databases in Fabric in just a matter of seconds without leaving your VS Code environment. We will also explore the latest GitHub Copilot features for the extension, whether you prefer to use agent mode or ask mode, there are powerful new capabilities that help you accelerate your database development. In this scenario, I was asked to create a Fabcon scheduler app. And the idea was born as, or started as a sketch in a whiteboard. And this is it, what you see on the screen. It, there are basically three entities, very simple proof of concept, which we have in the speaker, have sessions, and we have an agenda. Then we evolved this design into an entity design that you can see here represented in this mermaid diagram that provides us a better idea of what we want to do from the backend side. And we also created a flow and this flow gives you more information about how the Next.js, in this case, my front end is going to talk to the GraphQL API that will be hosted in SQL database in Fabric um, that is going to connect to our data source here. That is going to be our, right? So I already created a proof of concept of my front end that I can run here locally. And that will give you a better idea how I want this application to look like once it's fully hosted in Fabric. All right, so let's take a look at our local website here using the browser in VS Code. This is what I want to build. Right now, uh, the app is using static data. So everything you see right here is basically uh, JSON. A static JSON that I put on on the on the front end. So you see some names as Alan Turing here that we presented on my Fafcon, uh, Grace Hopper. I'll change this for sure because I'll be moving my backend entirely to Fabric. So I'll start from the scratch, creating the database, then creating a schema, seeding the data, and then connecting the dots to for my application to pull the information directly from fabric. All right, so I am going to start by sharing some information here about my front end that I already completed as I show you. I, and I am also sharing a screenshot. And this is so important because the more context you share to the agent, the better the results are going to be. Okay, so I'm sharing this and I can also include my mermaid designs here. Uh, so let me include the ones for the schema. So yeah, at this point, Copilot will have everything that is required to start building my app, or in this case, my, my database schema. All right, so GitHub Copilot got the context and provide me here a summary of what I said. Uh, so all good, it's ready to go. So my next prompt, it's a little bit different. I'm asking Copilot to assist me creating the ORM models here. Very important, I'm not even connected to my database yet. So that's going to come later, but I'm asking, yes, please create some relationships the way I want the models to be defined uh, and also I'm asking to add an environment variable for my connections and how my database connection string is going to look like. I'm going to submit this request here and wait for uh, GitHub Copilot to start scaffolding the different things I ask for. All right, it looks like the agent is done with all the changes. Yes, yeah, 14 changes so far. So it created a different models for my schema. That's good. It also added a configuration for a TypeScript to connect to a database. Uh, the seeding data is here, sample database on the conference data, the JSON. Remember I had a JSON a static data and I'm using for a local environment. So yeah, that's totally what I was expecting. So yeah, it looks like the relationships are there. Changes to the packages and my M file with the connection string, which is not real here. It's probably an example. Um, so yeah, it's all good. Let's take a look at the different files here. Uh, so yeah, that's um, what I was expecting to create a different models based on the different uh, and the diagram that I provided as uh, as um, as context. So the next step now is to run the migrations and and but we don't have database, right? So we don't have a database. So let's create a database using the MSQL extension. So I'm going to close everything here and I'm going to navigate towards the MSQL extension. And as you can see, I have only one Azure Dev database in the cloud databases folder. So I'm going to create the a fabric database now. By clicking here, this icon, it opens the deployments page. From the deployments page, you can select 
whether you want to create a local container or you want to create a SQL database in Fabric. Now in preview. So I'm going to select this option. My account is already set up here, so I won't have to sign in in the next step. But as you can see, there is an overview here that shows you about a proposition of SQL Database in Fabric. So you can simply select Get Started. Now, as I mentioned, because my account is already set up, I don't have to do anything. I need to only to provide a database name. So I'm going to call this Fab. Con. I have to give it a profile name if I want. If I don't provide a, fa uh, a profile name, the extension is going to use the database name as default for that. For the connection group, I'm going to select the cloud databases group. And for the workspace, it's called Alpha Prime. That's all I need to do to create a database. And then I'm going to simply select create database and wait for the provisioning process to complete. All right, so now the status has changed to connecting to a database. And as you can see, the item is right here in the Object Explorer. That means that the database was successfully provisioned. And now I'm automatically connected. I didn't have to do anything. So that's very cool because you can create your databases without leaving the VS Code environment. All right, so my database is here and I can connect. So um, next step is will be to run the SQLite migrations. So for that, what I can do is simply click here, this uh, pencil to modify my connection. And I have all the parameters here for my database, uh, but I can also use this little button to copy the connection string. So that would be saving me some time. I don't have to leave this environment. I can just drop this into uh, my application and go from there. In case you want to connect to a different database, we also introduce this is a new experience, which is called the Fabric Browse. So as you can see, I can connect to a different database here if I want. So let's call it this Fabric Demo. And from here, I can select a different workspace and let's do Alpha Prime. And from here, it will list the different databases I have. I can select this Data Prime database and then I can just um, use my credentials that are already set up here and click connect and that's it. Okay, so now I'm back to my project and what I'm going to do is basically ask GitHub Copilot to assist me running the migrations against my database. Remember, we created a database in a previous step. So now what will happen is that the different models that are basically tables and the mockup data will get inserted into my database. All right, so um, there was a couple of issues when I ask Copilot to assist me running the migrations and it was related to my configuration to my database but it was a simply troubleshooting and now it is executing the migration scripts against my database. Okay so it's done so let's run the CD now. All right so everything went fine changes were pushing to my database and now GitHub Copilot is basically running some testing to make sure everything works fine which for me it's okay to skip this step because uh, this is a proof of concept there is another way I can do this I'm going to uh, ask Copilot to use the MSQL tools to show me the schema so I can verify that the schema was successfully created so I can uh, I can just simply type here uh, the command or I can select one of the commands here that will allow me to uh, use this as a shortcut for my uh, Fabcon database in Fabric. So now the agent should pick the right tool and connect to the right database and show me the schema. So right now it's listing the connections, as you can see, it's just returning the list of connections. I have cloud connections and local connections. So I'll expect uh, Copilot to identify the one that is labeled as Fabric. And then from there, pick the correct database and show me the schema diagram. Right now it's retrieving the schema and let's see. And there we go. So let me just move this around. And as you can see, here's the SQLized tracking table and here are the different tables I ask Copilot to create. I can uh, do more here and probably ask to run a couple of queries just to verify the data or I can do it via uh, an extension. So let's do this right here in agent ask to run a query for the speakers table. And now you should pick the right tools and return the data right here on the chat window. Oh, and there you go, as you can see, I got my data back. Uh, just moving this to full screen. Uh, here's the data for the, the speakers. And these names are completely different to the names I had when I was using the JSON static data. And I did on purpose, uh, so I can show you that I am working with different data sets. Uh, in the previous data set has like Alan Turing and all historical characters. So yeah, this is completely different and this is looking good. Okay, so now the last step is to create a GraphQL endpoints and I will do two things here in parallel. So I will go ahead and, and create a GraphQL endpoints 
instructions. While I'm doing that, I am going to provide some very specific instructions here at GitHub Copilot to help me making a few changes. The changes are basically replacing the JSON data, the static data, remember from the local environment to uh, replace with this GraphQL URL. And that's going to be through an environment variable. I want to make this with proof. So I want to use something like Data API Builder to run a GraphQL endpoint locally when I do uh, some development. So I am also asking Copilot to make that change so I can switch back and forth between my local environment and my fabric environment. And lastly, I want to see the output of this implementation. So I'm going to provide these instructions here and then I will switch back to fabric to show you how to create the endpoint. Right, so now I am in fabric. So I'm going to select the database I just created and I'm going to create a GraphQL endpoint for my database. It's just matter to do a right click on any of my databases and then select create API for GraphQL. And with that, I'll give it a name and I'll say it will be Favcon, why not? And hit create. And then in the next screen, I have to select the, the entities. In this case, I will select the speaker in session. I don't need SQLize because yeah, it makes no sense for me. And then I simply select load and this is going to create the endpoint for me. I can also generate the code. In my case, I'm using a JavaScript backend. So it makes sense for me to use Node.js. I can copy this example, run it locally, but the most important thing I need is the endpoint. I'm going to use this to inject the GraphQL URL environment variable to point to this endpoint. I'll go back to GitHub Copilot once it's done and we'll see the results. All right, so Copilot is done with all the changes. Of course, I did a validation of what was done and it tests all the different GraphQL queries and validated data and everything else. Uh, but as you can see here, my M file right now is pointed to my GraphQL provider, which is Fabric. And what you see here in the chat, it says that I should st restart the server now, navigate to a local host and see the changes. It's not and it's not pointing anymore to my JSON data. I should see different speakers here that are the ones that exist on my database now. So let's run the server now. All right, so it says it's ready. So let me switch to my environment. And before we hit refresh here, I want to show you something very interesting. So all you see right here is the static data. Um, we have Alan Turing, Grace Hopper here. So if I refresh now, this is supposed to be fetching all the data directly from Fabric. And now we see that my data has changed. It's no longer static. And these roster of speakers are completely different than the one I had before. And this is because it's coming from my database. But hopefully you noticed something new on this UI. So I included some changes that allow me to use embeddings with a combination of vector data types to implement a rack pattern for this application so I can have this bot that can answer the question about my Favcon. Uh, so yeah, uh, for example, I can ask list all the speakers and I should get and the list of speakers return. I noticed a, a bug here that this is pointed to the previous set of speakers. So this is going to be interesting what will happen if I ask this question. And indeed, I put some prominent Indian rules and some guardrails here saying, hey, if you don't have the answer, reply with something you definitely know. And in this case, Jessica Wong is a valid speaker, is giving me the information about her session. So yeah, everything is working as expected and I am done with my application. All of this using the MS SQL extension in combination with GitHub Copilot and SQL database in Fabric. If we want to learn more about the MS SQL extension from VS Code, make sure to check out the links in the video description below. And for now, that's all. Thank you for watching and happy coding.